Okay, we have more to show you. A couple more things I want to make sure we get in here. Uh, there's a lot more functionality as part of our, our mobile technology built into JBoss Developer Studio at this point. So you've seen, uh, you've seen us edit this uh, user interface and of course interact with the JavaScript and then interact with the REST endpoint on my local host EAP running down here. That guy's still running. Uh, what I want to do next is kind of show you how to interact with a native device API. So that's very critical. Um, you know, so one of the real magic points of Cordova is not only bundling up your HTML and JavaScript, the deployment and deploying it to the actual device, but you can also interact with native APIs on the device, and that's very critical. All right, so let's um, let's add yet another page. So you can see here, I might come over here and look around. You can see there's my Enterprise Contacts page right there. If I click here, you can see it navigates. Um, but often I just leave that that closed, and then come in here and add another page. So I can want I want another page here called device contacts. All right, um, uh, let's just take the footer off, make it interesting. All right, I can add a back button again. Um, I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to hit finish or save. Okay, and then I can navigate over there in Cordova Sim. Right, that's the page I'm working on. Notice that I'm missing the I'm missing the button here for the menu, so I want to get that added in. That's going to be very critical. So let's see. There's our menu option right there. Okay, and so let's add something to it, and make it a little bit more interesting. What I need to do is put in the div tags that are the targets for, that are the targets specifically for the um, where we put the device contact content in. So when we get the contacts off the drive, we need to drop them in someplace. So the first thing I'm going to do uh, is add a button. So I don't want to load these automatically. I'm going to add a button that goes out and fetches the contacts. So fetch contacts. And we're going to call this guy the button fetch contacts, um, our device contacts, right? So device contacts. And we're going to just leave the icon and stuff alone and hit finish there. So I'm going to hit save. There's our button. All right, it doesn't do anything just yet. Um, but let me go ahead and add some other components to this user interface. I'm going to actually add a div tag, which gives me a little message. Um, put that right in here too. Okay, and then let's just add a paragraph to give it a little space. And then the last item I'll add is a list item here. And the list item is going to specifically be another way to drop in the contact records that we find. And so in this case, I'm going to call this device contacts. I want it to be read only, and I'll add the search capability too, which is kind of cool. All right, so let's hit finish there. So this is kind of what our, our basic user interface is going to look like. Uh, but now we've got to put some logic behind it. All right, we want to be able to uh, interact with the device API to grab the device contacts. And Cordova Sim does simulate that for us. So I'm going to now write some code. All right, so let's go back to index.js here. All right, in the case of using typical device APIs, you typically have a callback mechanism. All right, so you have to have callback functions. So I'm going to have I'm going to copy and paste these in, so I don't have to type them all. All right, and in a typical demonstration of this, uh, that's what I do. I just copy and paste it in. You can see this is the success function. This is the error function. Um, you can kind of see how it's laid out here. The contacts on success. I have a little debug that says we found and how many we found on the device. Uh, it does the same thing you saw earlier. It empties the list item. It loops through all the things we find. It does the append. It does the refresh. So that's almost identical to what we had here for the enterprise contacts, except this is the device contacts. So it's very, very similar from that perspective. Uh, now I need to add the button click logic, though. So when you click the button, we go out and find the contacts and call those two callback mechanisms. So I'm going to drop that in right here. Right, right below that get JSON we had earlier for the enterprise contacts, and it's going to say um, again the click event. So when the user hits that button, it's going to log a message out to the console. It's going to update the debug message that little div tag earlier. You can't quite see it right here, but it'll show up there when we actually get going. It'll say it's finding to let the user know it's working on something, uh, and then of course it, it uses the navigator API for that. Okay, um, you can see the, that's the specific API navigator.contacts.find. So there's one other thing I need to do though is in order to use a native device API, you actually have to um, use a Cordova plugin. So if you look at the plugin section here, that's one area you've not explored yet. You right click on plugins and say install Cordova plugin. And when you install a Cordova plugin, um, you basically are looking at the Cordova registry and all the different device APIs are installed as plugins. So I want to interact with the battery status, interact with the camera. Uh, console is kind of what we see here showing up here down here below, but you can also have the console there, which is useful if you're debugging in, in Xcode or using the native Android tools. In this case, I need contacts, 
Um, but there's others here like device motion, that's the accelerometer, uh, device orientation, and there's all kinds of nice items. And then the list goes on and on and on. Geolocation, in-app browser, you know, there's a really long list there. The ones you can pretty much count on are the ones that begin org, Dot Apache, dot Cordova. So just keep that in mind. There's a ton out there in the registry, but those are the key core ones, the ones that are the org, dot Apache, dot Cordova, and of course, org. Uh, there's the uh, JBoss ones as well, and specifically Arrow Gear here. We're going to look, look for that. Uh, so the push one also. So just keep that in mind. But I'm going to just use the um, contacts one. And you can see there's a little con uh, search right here. I'll do a search. See, that's the checked one. I don't care about the BlackBerry version of that or this other one. I just want the org.apache Cordova. I'm going to hit next. Uh, and there's a current bug in the 212, so just bear that in mind. It's to be fixed in 213. But I'm going to go back and pick 210. So it is nice you can pick the version of the plugin uh, that you want to work. And I'm going to hit finish here. Uh, and then uh, if uh, all goes well, let's see here. Let's see here. All right. And. Um, I think I have everything installed correctly. Dun, 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 dun. And I must have misspelled something here. So BTN contacts, let's see here. BTN con contacts. Oh, it looks like the same spelling. Oh, how about you hit save? There we go. Okay, so my bad. Um, helps if you hit save on the code changes you make. All right, so we got, there's all our contact records right there. Uh, and that's what Cordova Sim is simulating. And, and basically that's what you have if uh, you're in the simulation environment. But when it comes to starting, when you start using native device APIs like this, this is really when you really want to start running it on a device. Okay, so that's very critical. So I'm going to come over here now and right click on this guy and say run as on Android device, run on Android device. Um, so it says, please locate your Android SDKs because we need the Android SDKs to produce the project, build the project, uh, and then deploy it to the actual phone. I'm gonna hit yes here and browse. And I have my Android SDKs right there. So you can see that's what it looks like at the directory level. This works on Windows or Mac or Linux, you know, so anything that supports Android. Uh, so you should be okay there. And then we come back and say run as on Android device. And that's going to go through a process, right? Because it's got to build, it's got to generate the Android project, and then it goes through the whole Android build process. So it takes a few seconds to get that going. But in the short term, let me show you what my device looks like. Okay, so this is my Nexus 7. Uh, a couple things that are critical here. Let's see before it actually catches me. Um, let's go to settings. It's going to come up here in a few seconds. But let's go to settings. Notice I have developer options enabled here. So there's a trick to enabling developer options on your Android device. Uh, if I remember correctly, uh, it's been a while since I did it. I think you come over here and tap something like five times, like the build number or something. You can Google for that and figure that one out. But this is um, an Android 442 device. Uh, again, it's a Nexus 7, relatively inexpensive device, great for testing. And oh, there, here comes the app now. It's starting to be installed, and there it is. And let's move this down so you can see it inside the camera a little bit better. And so now I can look at my application earlier, Enterprise Contacts, uh, whoop, it help, might help if I click the right one there. And you notice that it gave me item one, two, and three. That's because it did not get connected over to the server. Um, and you know why? I can tell you why exactly. So here I used localhost 8080, and that's obviously not the localhost option here. I need to put in the IP address. So let's fix that while we're here. All right, so my IP address is 192. Uh, 168, because this will let me copy. No, so it won't let me copy. Uh, 192.168.1.19.1. Uh, All right, got that changed. So it works fine here on the local machine, right? Because it's it knows its own IP address. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and say run as and get that going again. Uh, run on Android device and let it get going. All right. So it goes through its build process. But while we're waiting for that, let's come over here to device contacts. Okay, and let's see how this works out. And fetch. Notice it says finding, and I have a lot of contacts in my Google account because everything you've ever, everyone you ever emailed in Gmail on an Android device pretty much shows up as a contact. So there's 2,700 contacts, and I've deleted some. You can see that I got a whole bunch of them out there. Uh, on my iPhone, I have vastly less than that. So if I go back to the home screen, though. You can see there's the Android 3001 down, down there. All right, that's the same guy. So remember earlier, 
I mentioned that the name you put in shows up as the name on the phone itself so just keep that one in mind um, and the app is installed so you can unplug the device now and run away with it so let me go back it just it just updated the application and there's my enterprise contacts after I made that change okay so uh, I can do the multitasking in Android I can kill the application I can go to the home screen go down here hit that icon again to relaunch the application and there it goes through its relaunch process and you know there we go so I can come up here and interact with it again okay so that's the process you need to get going on Android It's about that hard so Android is by far and away the easiest to work with and it actually deploys fairly quickly um, you know when it comes to interacting with uh, JBoss Developer Studio but just run as on Android device is the magic that you need to publish that out to the uh, device itself your phone your tablet etc alright there's more to come but that's all for now